On today's edition of Cliff Richard, The Vinyl Years, we're going to cover picture discs, specifically the singles. Picture discs had been around since the 1930s and didn't become popular until post-war Britain. The quality wasn't great. They moved on. And it was in the 80s when we seen an explosion of picture discs from a lot of artists. Was it a marketing ploy? We, the reality was the quality of the vinyl wasn't as good as the, the, you know, the original pressing. And um, that it became more of a collector's item. Now Cliff Richard joined in that, or his marketing team joined in that in the early 80s. And started with a song that we'll all remember, it's uh, Little Town. Charted at number 11. And um, had a simple picture of Cliff Richard uh, on the front. Um, on the back, you had the, the track listings, which was typical of these early editions. As we go through the collection, you'll see that the information uh, becomes put on card and things like that. The second single to come out on um, Picture Disc was a duet with Sheila Walsh. Um, uh, Sheila Walsh and Cliff Richard it was a, more of a, a Christian background uh, on that one and they sang songs together. Charted in at 64, didn't do particularly well, um, but still a nice song and a, an important addition uh, to Sheila Walsh's career. Um, Cliff Richard worked a lot in the background you know, as, as far as producing, backing vocals and uh, clearly doing some singing as well particularly on this single. If we look at the back, it's really just uh, information uh, on the on the artists themselves in the sense of who produced blah blah blah. You know. So the third single to come out was an interesting um copy of Shooting from the Heart. It became an uh, a heart shaped edition. And uh, charted at fifty one, which is probably less than it probably deserved. I think that you know had a hit uh, on it. However, uh, probably the most interesting thing um, on this edition, and certainly in this picture, of this uh, was the the heart shaped. And if we turn over, um, we'll see that it's it's uh, they made a bit of effort as far as a, a, little, a little bit stylish um, added to the disc. There was a production error. Um, on it and what they did was they inserted a small green card um, and just crediting the um, the production um, uh, whatever they made the error that's how they, they rectified it so the most interesting thing about this one was the shape we start to see there there's a wee bit of thought going into it and we'll see various shapes as we go along so the next single was another, well, it was a combination. It was the um, disc with uh, called Living Doll with the Young Ones, which were a TV uh, quartet uh, of comedians who were remarkably successful with the total polar opposite of the uh, crude humour and stuff like that, which went against the sort of lifestyle we, we associate with Cliff Richard. The reality is, is that that probably helped promote the whole thing and the uh, antics of the young ones um, it made a hilarious um, uh, outcome in terms of the promotion of the, ad, uh, uh, of the record itself and uh, ultimately featuring Cliff Richard and Hank Marvin, um, just out of interest and he's, he obviously features on the record itself. Um, it was a gold disc, a, U a UK uh, gold disc, it was number one in a lot of countries but specifically in the UK uh, 400,000 records it's got to sell uh, the sort of minimum amount to achieve that that standing and of course it was a charity single you know there was other charity singles and another, another edition of this one I'm going to cover uh, all the charity uh, singles that Cliff uh, features in um, so it's for Save, uh, Save the Children um, in, specifically in Africa uh, for the Ethiopians and Sudanese um, so it was a number one record for Cliff and still as popular today as it was then, I'm pretty sure. Next up was Slow Rivers. Um, it was a duet with uh, Elton John. 
and uh, featured on Elton John's record label. So I suppose it's an Elton John featuring Cliff Richard. Um, however, um, two great icons of music coming together it was always going to stimulate some interest. However, chart wise, didn't do so well, only reached number 44. Um, it was recorded in um, 1984. Um, and this edition didn't release to the charts, and all, all editions actually, in uh, 1986. Um, the picture on the front, um, that you can see on the disc, um, was taken from uh, Cliff from the Hip, which was a 1986 Channel 4 uh, special uh, on there. So, interesting enough, and nice record again. And surprisingly, for these two, uh, not charting particularly well. Next up was the single, Some People, it was a Cliff um, record on his own, um, and this was remarkably successful, in fact it's a fantastic song so there's no reason why we shouldn't expect it to be. The Shape single um, had a, sort of an outline of Cliff as you can see um, on the back, um, the, more images uh, on there and the pictures down the bottom appeared as far as the promotion pack on the singles so the, the fans could get access to these singles but uh, the, the pictures so you can see uh, in there so this charted at number three and it really signified um, a good return uh, for Cliff Richard back into the charts after some quiet time and uh, promises to, uh, to be some good it did uh, reach silver uh, level which meant excess of 200,000 uh, copies um, so it was a good record and um, will feature in all of uh, Cliff's best of things, types of albums. Next up was Shooting From The Heart, released in time for Valentine's. Valentine's. What you can see is the, the heart-shaped single uh, on there. Um, it charted at 34, which was maybe you know slightly lower. I think we probably always look at a top 30 hit as being a significant hit. Um, so I think there's a wee bit of disappointment in there. So the, um, if I... It's a pink and red uh, hearts on there, and if you look to uh, the top right of the disc, it was a little label in there too. From it was set, it was marketing as something you could give to your uh, girlfriend, boyfriend, and things like that. Um, so uh, not a lot else about that one. It's an okay ditto, um, and um, just outside the charts, um, probably should have charted uh, higher, in my opinion. The next disc that was released, or picture disc that was released, was a Lean On You, um, shaped in the heart and shoulders. There was actually two editions of this one. Uh, I don't have the other copy, um, but basically it was a 7-inch single with that same picture pushed into the 7-inch uh, edition. Um, the, the charts, uh, why is it reached number 17? That was a reasonable hit, and... Um, one of one of my you know particular favourites, which is fairly fairly relevant, I suppose. Um, the nothing much else to say about that one, but that was nineteen eighty nine. So we were starting to see that these types of records were starting to pale as far as adding on to sales and marketing to go. Um, so they were working um, really diff uh, really hard to market lots of different editions from. Uh, the CDs to the tapes to the vinyl to you know everything going out, um, but a chart single of seventeen is a sizable hit. Next up was uh, from a distance. Um, the picture here was taken from the event concert. Um, the Wembley, absolutely phenomenal. All records broken uh, for cont uh, continuous crowds or the amount of nights. Uh, I don't know, remember exactly, but uh, fantastic. Uh, album, the whole thing, and there was actually two or three um, singles taken from this one, and a lot of, you'll see a lot of parts of the concert appearing in different singles and things like that. But specifically, um, from a distance, um, was released um, and charted in at number eleven. Um, it's a, a fantastic song, it works back to the pop uh, with a religious uh, uh, overtone on it, and it's just a lovely record. In, in my opinion, um, the the B side from a distance, and I could easily fall in love. Um, also features uh, from the same concert, 
uh, on there. Slightly difference from the album is that the the ending was fading and they've cut out some crowd noise and stuff like that. But essentially, nice record, um, fantastic song, and uh, certainly uh, one that's important to the collection. As far as picture discs go, that was it. You know, the, the 80s saw the end of that one. It went away. The way they were compiling the charts is in terms of um, record sales, it became slightly different. It was before it was all sales. So whatever the marketing, um, they could include that on, you know, like freebies and things like that. There were a turnaround on the records and they, it become, the rules became more stringent. And I think it affected all artists, not just Cliff, uh, Cliff himself. So what we've seen is that the picture disc starting to fade and the amount of, we started to see um, vinyl starting to disappear and more the CD only editions and things like that uh, coming on there. But however, you know, we've got this interesting one. In uh, 2020, so that was uh, from 1990 right through um, to th for 30 years before the next picture disc came out. And that um, was the Saviour's Day, a mistletoe and wine uh, double A side that was released uh, on there. So we've got um, a silhouette of Cliff on the back and um, yeah it was more interesting from a collector's item. There's no Cliff fan out there that doesn't have these two singles somewhere in the collection, an album or, or whatever. Anyway, now in terms of the picture this we have we covered everything well pretty much i haven't covered the albums there's a there's loads of albums out there from the heart is one of my particular favorite but we have pictured this in there there's interview discs and pictures and things like that i was interested in the singles the ones that were out there for the fans and the, the ones that uh, the, the records that cliff uh, believed in or his, his team believed in would make hits and that's hopefully i've covered all of those today so that's all for me from Cliff, the vinyl years. Next time round, I'll pick up another uh, aspect and hope you can uh, you can join me. Uh, I'll put a listing of all the singles um, on the, the description below. I can't play any of the singles simply because of copyright issues. I've applied so I can play these as a backdrop. However, lots of these songs are familiar to uh, Cliff fans everywhere. So from that point of view, you you could maybe play them in your head until I get permission. Anyway, glad you could join me. Hope to see you next time.